All right then gang, so in this video, I wanna dive right into this layout component right here. So this is a specially named component, underscore layout, so that Sapper can identify it as a layout file. And this file is used to wrap around all of our route components. So things like the index component, about, or any components that we create inside jobs, etc. So it wraps around all of those and it contains common elements that are gonna be present on all of those components. So the thing we have to always place inside the layout is this slot right here because that is where the route component templates are gonna be placed right here. So for example, this template right here that we have inside the about components, that is gonna be placed inside this slot right here, okay? So it must be present in the layout. You can move it around, you can place it up here or down here, and you can change the whole template of the layout itself, but the slot must always be present. So once it's injected into that position, then all of this stuff is injected into the templates right here where we have the Sapper HTML. And that makes up the HTML page then, all right? So then, this is a layout file that wraps all of our route components because it makes no sense to code common elements like the nav that we have right here or a footer if we have one on every individual route component. So we just code all of that once here and then we use it to wrap our route components. Now currently in this file we just have some basic styles for the main tag right here and we also have a nav as well. And inside that nav, we have this variable called segment, which we're going to come to shortly when we tackle the nav. But first, though, I just want to change the styles a little bit inside this file. So what I want to do is change this from 56 M's to 960 pixels like so. And then the background color, we can take that out because it's white by default anyway. Uh, the padding will change from 2 M's to 60 pixels top and bottom, 10 pixels left and right and then the margin can stay the same. We don't need this at the bottom, the box sizing either. Now, if we save that, then nothing much is gonna change. It just scoots around a little bit, but we can change the styles inside here if we want to, or we could add more content down here if we want to. We don't need to do that. So next up, I'm gonna tackle this nav right here. In fact, before we do that, what I'd like to do is create a footer component, which we can place at the bottom over here. So let me create that inside the components folder. Remember, this is for reusable, dropping components, create a new file called footer.svelte and then inside here we need a style tag and then below that we just need a simple footer and that's going to say inside copyright 2020 job ninja. All right, that's all there is to it. In fact, let's just play some simple styles. I'm going to grab these from my repo and paste them in so you don't have to watch me type them out. And dead simple, we just give this a color of a light gray for the text, text align to the center, bit of padding, max width of 400 pixels, a margin 40 pixels to the top, auto left and right, zero bottom, and then a border at the top as well. All right, so now we just need to import this footer component so we can use it inside the layout down here. So let me do that by copying this line and change nav to footer instead. All right. So now at the bottom, we can add that footer like so. And if we save it now, we should see this footer on every page because it's now in the layout. So if I go over here, we can see the footer at the bottom. On the about page, we can see that. If I go to jobs, we should be able to see that. Cool, all works. Okay, so now let's do this nav. So first of all, this nav is this nav component over here and we can use it because we're importing it at the top. Now, we'll come back to this segment in a moment, but first of all, I want to just update the links because currently we have a blog link in it and that doesn't exist anymore. Instead, we want jobs there and also we have a contact page which we need to add to the nav as well. So, let's do that first of all. I'm going to scroll down to the templates and then I'm going to get rid of the comment here. I'm also going to get rid of all of this stuff which uses the segment right here. We'll explain exactly what that is later. This is just being used to add like an active class or a class of page to each element that's active. So if you're on that page, it gets that class. But again, we'll see it later. And let's get rid of the bottom one as well. All right, so now we need to change this from blog to jobs and then this to jobs as well. So the first one over here, this home one, 
This dot means go to the root level of the domain. So it just means go to just forward slash essentially at the end. So that takes us to the home page. That's fine. The about one is fine. The jobs one is fine. Now we also need one for the contact page. So let's do that. And um, this is going to contact and contact again. All right. And now what I'd like to do is surround this ul with a div and that's so as well as the ul we can have a title in the nav as well and let me just scoot this in like so all right and in that div we can also have an h1 that says job ninja all right so if we save this we should see that job ninja at the top and all of these links are updated as well cool so we just need to style this a little bit now let me get rid of all of these styles first we don't need those and what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste some styles from my github repo because I don't want to bore you writing all of these out from scratch so all we're doing is giving this nav tag which is this thing surrounding the whole thing a background of a light gray then the div inside that a max width of 960 pixels and a margin of auto left and right so that it appears in the center so if we are in a large screen it's gonna be in the center we're giving the div inside the nav a max width of 960 pixels, padding 0 top, 10 pixel left and right, margin 0 top and bottom, auto left and right, and that makes it into a central column. We're displaying this as grid so that all the elements inside that can be laid out into grid columns, and those columns are right here, one fraction each. We're aligning the items to the center vertically so they align with each other in the vertical axis. All right. Down here we have the H1 styles, just some very simple ones. The UL as well, which looks funky in terms of formatting. And then we have the LI tags, display those as inline block, and the anchor tags, just some basic styles. All right, if I save this anyway, it's going to look a little bit nicer. All right, so we have this nav right here. So this all works, but I also want to do something with this segment thing over here. What is that? Well, the segment property is something we get access to in this layout automatically. And it's passed into the nav as a prop right here, which is why we have it over here accepted as a prop. And it basically tells us what component or page we're currently viewing. So what I'm going to do just to test this out is add a click event to this H1. So I'm going to say click like so and pass in a handle click function. So we need to create that function in the script const handle click is equal to a function and inside that all we're going to do is console.log the segment so we're logging this to the console right just so i can show you what it is on each page now over here if we open up the console and zoom in a touch then if we click on this we can see that the segment is currently undefined and that's because we're on the home page when we're at the root of the domain the segment is undefined but if we go to another page like contact and then click on this we can see this is the segment if we go to about and we click on this about is the segment if we go to jobs and then oops click on that and then click on this then jobs is the segment. So this segment basically tells us what page we're on and we can use that to dynamically output a class for one of these links to say, hey, we're currently on this page. Therefore, we can style it a bit differently if we're on that page. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's do this. Let's down at the bottom check for this segment in each one of these and conditionally apply a class. So the way we do that is as follows. First of all, we say, we want to give this a class, but the class we want to give it is not going to be hard coded. Instead, we're going to say colon and the class name is going to be current and we'll style that later on. And we're going to set that equal to some kind of evaluation. So basically what this is going to do is apply a class of current to this element or rather this anchor tag right here. If whatever is inside these curly braces evaluates to true. So if this is true, then this anchor tag gets the class of current. If it's not true, it doesn't. So what do we want to evaluate? Well, we want to evaluate the segment, right? So we want to see, is that equal to undefined? Because this is the home page, remember, right? And on the home page, the segment is undefined. So if this is undefined, then this is going to be true and it means we're on the home page and if that's the case then we're going to get a class of current on this anchor tag right if we're on a different page like contact or something like that then this is going to be false and therefore we won't get a class of current does that make sense 
and we're going to do that for each one of these anchor tags so let me paste them in down here and here and also here so we want to check to see if segment here is equal to contact so let's say contact and then here we want to see if it's equal to about and then down here we want to see if it's equal to jobs all right so save that and preview and if we inspect these elements right now and look at the anchor tag inside them we can see that this one doesn't have a class of currents the second one doesn't either oh it does the second one does and that's because we are on the contact page but if we go to the home page check this out this one gets a class of current and it's taken away from this if we go to the about page then this one gets a class of current and it's taken away from this one all right so now we can style that a little bit differently so all i want to do is give each anchor tag a border bottom when it has a class of current so let me do that i'm going to say a dot current and then inside here i'm going to say border hyphen bottom is going to be three pixels and then it's going to be solid and also a color of kind of like an orangey red which is ff 3e00 all right so let's save that and we can see now when we click on one of these when it's current we get that class and we can style it a bit differently okay cool so that is the layout the nav and the footer done next up i want to take a side step to talk about code which runs on the server versus code which runs on the client in the browser